Hi, Global Family. Happy Sunday. I'm so glad to see you and to share the word of truth with you every Sunday through online and offline worship service. Last Sunday, we learned how God's dreams come true through the people of love, people of no bitterness, and people of God-centered life. We want to dream big this year to serve our great God who reigns over all nations and universe. Take the time to dream God's dream to save the lost world. If our dreams are in line with God's vision, He will make our dreams come true in reality. Amen? Today, we want to take the time to think about giving. When it comes to giving, we think easily of giving money. But giving is beyond the money matter. Let us learn what to give and how to give through the Word of God today. Before we open the Word of God today, I just want to start with this question. How much money do you need if you want to be satisfied? You think $100 is not enough to use for a living in a month? But so many people in the world are living under the bread line each day. It means they don't earn more than $1 in a day. $100 are one month payment for ordinary workers in Zambia today. As I visited this nation recently, it is a big money for them for a month. Then, how much is enough? Jesus mentioned the money matters more than any other issue in our lives. He says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Our faith and devotion to Christ are real and practical. It is not too vague. Let us uh, look at the Word of God today from the Matthew chapter 14, verses from 13 to 21. Uh, look at your Bible, I'll read for you. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it is getting late already. Send the crowd away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of God given to us for Global Family Church today. The Bible tells us a lot of miracles and signs of Jesus. One of the great miracles Jesus did was to feed the 5,000 men with the two fish and five breads. This miracle is written in all four Gospels. This miracle started actually with giving what the little boy had in his hands to Jesus. The fish he offered to Jesus was ictus in Greek, that was a small fish which was deserted in the, in the seashore after fishermen selects the ones you know, worthy of selling. The bread he offered was in you know, Arthur's in Greek, which is in you know, Mashua in Hebrew. This bread is not delicious and luxurious bread we eat, enjoy in bakery shop today. No, this bread was very simple barley bread the ordinary people ate at those days. Now, this is a simple lunch box for a little boy. But when Nothing significant in our hands is offered to Jesus' hand. There will be a great miracle. Amen? 
Through the passage we read, we can find the biblical truth about how to give and what to give. Before we give something to the Lord and the people who are in need, we need to understand the attitude of heart for giving. How to give? I want to share the three attitudes of heart to give. Number one, with compassion we should give. Look at verse 14. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. You know, I found one particular word in the Bible. Whenever Jesus did the miracles and signs, it is the word compassion. Before Jesus did the miracles and signs to the people, the Bible says that Jesus has compassion on them. Jesus had a compassion on the crowd who were wandering without shepherds. The Bible speaks to us over and over again. Jesus had a compassion on people who are lost. Now, this is the right attitude of our hearts before we give something we have to the people who are in need. Amen? It is not money issue, but all about heart issue when it comes to the right giving. Jesus saw this word with the Father's heart to give something he has to the people on earth. His life is full of giving until he gave all his life for us. Amen? Jesus wants us to be the giver with the compassion he had toward the people who are lost in this world. Dr. Bob Pierce founded World Vision three years after he came to face to face with an abandoned child and chose not to look away. Determined the last five dollars in his pocket wasn't enough. He knew more people had to be involved for a long-term solution and broader impact. He said, let my heart be broken by the things that break the heart of God. With the compassion of God's heart, the world vision was born, saving so many children around 110 countries today. Remember that every miracle starts with this compassion. Amen? If you have a compassion that Jesus has, you will be willing to give whatever you have in your hands. How to give? Second, with the devotion we should give. As the evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowd away so they can go to the villages and uh, buy themselves some food. If you read John chapter 6, the, the same story is written. We can see that Jesus asked Philip this question to test him. Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Then Philip answered him, Oh, Jesus, eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. He was very quick to calculate the cost to buy bread for the crowd. We can see such a people who think about the cost before we do something for God. Of course, we have to consider the cost and plan well. But we should not forget who is with us. Philip forget Jesus who can do whatever he is pleased with, even though Philip saw a lot of miracles of Jesus. While we have such a people who are sitting and calculating the cost, there are people who take the time to see any resources and any opportunities in action. In John chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, the Bible mentions their names. Another of his disciples, Andrew and Simon, Peter's brother. They spoke up. Here is a boy Jesus with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Whenever we face problems and challenges, there are two people groups divided. One group sit and calculate the cause and only see the reality. But the other group searches for any solution. Well, do you belong to? But both Philip and Andrew could not see who Jesus is in faith beyond the reality. 
Look at the verse 16. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give something to eat. You give something to eat. You know, we tend to calculate the cost first before we carry out God's mission. We think and say to God, God, this is a mission impossible. We cannot do it. Now, this was the attitude of disciples. Jesus, even eight months wages cannot be enough to feed all these crowds. Mission impossible. But Jesus said to them, you give them something to eat. Now, this is the same message given to us today from the Lord Jesus. Don't look for other ways. Give them something you have already. Amen? As disciples gave a report of five breads and two fish from a little boy, Jesus commanded to bring them to him. We know this story well since childhood. But did you think this story from the side of a little boy? This is only food he had. Then disciples of Jesus came and asked his uh, only food and there is no bitter crying written in the Bible about this boy. He was uh, nameless but willing to give when he heard that Jesus needed his lunchbox. You know, this is the heart of devotion, not material stuff. Before we give something, Jesus is always looking for our hearts of devotion. A little boy's devotion brought miracle and makes all people there satisfied. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I will show you a short video clip about a handful of rice. A handful of rice is nothing. But when it is offered to the Lord's hands with a heart of devotion, miracle happens even today. Let's watch this video clip and I will be back after this. Lal Rua lives in a tiny remote village in Mizoram. Her family sustains on a meager income of less than one dollar a day. Despite abject poverty, simple women like Lalwa are spearheading a revolution that is sweeping the world of missions. Their movement, Bufai Tang, or a handful of rice. Bufai Tam is a practice where each Mizo family puts aside a handful of rice every time they cook a meal and later gather it and offer to the church. The church in turn sells the rice and generates income to support its work. Rice has been the staple food of the people of Mizoram. You are giving what is basic, essential, fundamental to your life you are sharing that with God. With the passage of time, people have given more than rice, vegetables, firewood, cereals, and their regular tithes, empowering the church to be self-sufficient. Mizoram state is the most backward state in India. And we are the poorest of the, of the poor, but still, we can raise funds for the ministry of the Lord. At the close of this last physical year, we received altogether around 13 million US dollars. Out of that, 12% of our total income is from the handful of rice collection. With 1,800 missionaries in India, and many overseas, the Mizoram Church is known as a missionary church world over. This success is attributed to their selfless and creative giving. It is not our richness or our poverty 
that make us serve the Lord, but our willingness. So we Mizo people say, as long as we have something to eat every day, we have something to give to God every day. If we have something to eat every day, you have something to give to God every day. Remember this. Amen? How to give? We have to give a willing heart of devotion. Then you will see the miracle in your life even today. Lastly, how to give? We should give whatever we have with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Look at the verse 19. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, uh, taking five loaves and uh, two fish, and uh, looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. After five breads and two fish were brought to Jesus, Jesus gave thanks to God, looking up to heaven. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. There, the miracle of multiplication took a place in the desert. When you can give thanks with the small things, you can give thanks to God with the big things in your life. Amen? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have a food and clothing, we will be content with that. If you can be thankful with what you have right now and give it to God, God will make it multiply for His glory. Amen? Jesus gave thanks to God with the little things offered by a boy. Then the miracle of multiplication started. This is the attitude of our heart to give, whether we give to God or people in need. As I conclude the message today, you know, this is the secret of an abundant life. Look at the, uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 20. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. When two fish and small five breads were offered to the hand of Jesus, there was a great miracle that all people ate and were satisfied. According to the Bible scholars, the numbers of people who ate might be around 20,000 people, including women and children. They were all ate and were satisfied, and even leftover food were collected in 12 basketfuls. Hallelujah! You know, this is the secret of abundant life by giving. Amen? Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have a life and have it to the full. Jesus wants us to live abundant life by giving our hearts fully to him with a thanksgiving, with a devotion and compassion for the lost world. Then he will use us to be a channel of his blessings to multiply. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for the message given to us today. We want to be a true giver to you and to the people who are in need. When we give something we have in our hands, we want to give to them with a thanks for the heart, with a devotion. Continue to Lord Jesus and help us to love people with the compassion you have, Lord Jesus, so that we want to see the, such a miracles of multiplication in our lives. I want to thank you, Father, for the new year, 2024. We want to take the time to give something we have for your kingdom's sake and use us, Father, for your glory as we 
open our hands and give it to your hands. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.